rest of our speakers from Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I should have wrote some notes down. Um, thanks for coming. My name is Jeff Wood. I'm part of Affinity Lending with Home Street Bank, part of your benefits package. Uh, and part of our benefit that we do is we bring in different classes for lunch and learns to kind of teach you about things about home, home ownership, things to do in your home. Um, today we're doing um, uh, green, basically living green within, within your home. Um, and so we brought one, a partner at Washington Energy Services with us to kind of help go over some of that. Since it's not really our expertise, I'm going, because if I'm sitting here telling you stuff about like, getting new furnaces or more insulation, you'd be like, what does he know? Which is very little. So, <clears throat> so we're, I brought, um, uh, we brought them in so they can um, kind of go over their program. And what I'm going to do is talk about at the end just kind of some things that we can do for financing or how you can save for getting these projects done. So there's different op, um, um, projects that we can work with. Or if you're looking to buy a house and have it done while you buy it, there's also some uh, programs we have for that. So I apologize, I forgot your name. Craig. Craig. So and I'll turn it over to Craig and um, he'll kind of talk about the, their services with us or with their, with their company. All right. Well, thank you, Jeff. And thank you all for coming here. Um, so, as you can see, uh, this is a self-titled uh, little PowerPoint on how to have an all comfortable, healthy, and efficient home. So, before we get going, a little bit about Washington Energy Services. Uh, we're a family-owned contracting company, been in business since 1957. Um, a lot of folks associate us with uh, the utility company, PSE, um, which back in the day was Washington Natural Gas. Uh, they used to do private um, retrofit contracting, and then uh, I believe in the late 90s, they sold off uh, the, uh, that, that part of their business, uh, which um, we bought, and uh, changed it from Washington Natural Gas to Washington Energy Services. Um, so we do uh, kind of a whole variety of contracting. Our, uh, our motto is all with one call. So uh, we do windows door siding, uh, insulation, home energy audits, uh, heating systems, plumbing, um, and everything, the kind of the unique thing about us is everyone's in-house, so we don't use any subcontractors. Everyone is in you know, their division, uh, so instead of, you know, typically if you're doing a larger scale remodel, you're looking at, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different contractors, it's a lot of management. Uh, so this way, you work with one person, if you do, you know, an HVAC project, and then 10 years later, you want to do a window project, uh, and you like you know, the service, then you can have one person, don't have to worry about it. So, with that, let's get going. I got a little clicker too, which is just lovely. So, with, you know, homes, homeowners, and all that stuff, a lot of folks have a lot of different wants and needs and stuff like that. Uh, one of the, the things that we really try hard to do when we're, you know, meeting with folks is really understand, you know, what they want. Uh, because people will say, oh, I want, you know, to be more energy efficient, right? And my windows are, you know, that, that's got to be the cause of it. But, you know, it might not be the cause of it. Or, you know, a lot of folks just want to be comfortable in their home. And whatever is the most comfortable uh, is might not necessarily mean, you know, the most efficient and all that stuff. So it's kind of weighing what your particular wants are. Um, and then, uh, you know, what, what that is. And then going from there, identifying the why it's happening, which is kind of the main point of this presentation. And then finally, how are you going to go about fixing it? Uh, so, moving on. So, we at Washington Energy kind of take on the Madonna philosophy, and I, I bet here at, uh, you know, Wall Spring can hold true. No matter who you are, no matter what you did, no matter where you come from, you can always change and become a better version of yourself. So, we apply this to homes. Uh, you know, because homes, uh, whether they were built this year or they were built 100 years ago, um, they will have inherent you know, problems uh, and they work kind of in a complicated way and a lot of times we sort of discount that. Um, and so we really believe that homes can be fixed smartly, um, efficiently, uh, cost effectively and all that good stuff. Um, and so understanding what you want to change is the first step of creating a better version of your home. So with that, um, do we have any, uh, how, how many homeowners in the, the room? Oh, look at that, nice work. Um, so. Would any of you be willing to share maybe something that you, you, is a problem in your home? Like for me, uh, I have one room uh, that has high ceilings. 
and it has you know a big window front. And it's the only room with high ceilings in the, the home. And that room typically, because I'm a bit of a nerd for this kind of stuff, is about three to four degrees cooler um, than the rest of my house. Um, and so you know every time I'm in there, I notice that, and I go, ah, you yeah, know, it's a little bit colder. And any of you guys have anything like that? We have single pane windows. Single pane windows. 1960s house. And what do you not like about that? Um, a lot of oil uh, bills. Yes. And so, I mean, when the cost, mm -hmm. this year it's great because it's lower. Yeah. But, um, you know, that oil cost is like way high on in other cold years. Certainly, certainly. Any, anyone else want to share, Phyllis? My house is 100 years old. I think that probably says it all, right? Yes. <laughs> Very little insulation. Mm -hmm. um, at least the windows are double pane, but some of them have broken their seal. So I'm, I know I'm losing energy here. Yeah. And then is it is it the energy savings that is the, like, I, I know that I'm, I'm wasting more energy than I need? Or, or would you say it's the fact that I would prefer to be a lot more comfortable in my house? Mm -hmm. Well, I would, yeah, I'd like the heat to actually feel like it's staying in the Yeah, <laughs> And so, you know, homes, they have aches and pains. Uh, you know, what would you be telling if you, what, what we hear most in the field is, is comfort is often the, the number one driver. The, the high utility bills and uh, the other stuff definitely contributes to it. Also, you know, the efficiency and the fact that, you know, homes are one of the biggest carbon producers in our nation and they can be sealed a lot better. Um, but, you know, kind of doing that exercise and really thinking about, you know, what are the th your pain points in your home really helps you in, in deciding what improvements to do in the future. Um, so we consider pain points home performance systems. And so home performance is looking at a home uh, as a system instead of a series of non-related components. So rooms that are too cold, too hot, plumbing that freezes or scalds you, drafty areas, high utility bills, uh, high water use, smell of gas and air appliances. These are signs of energy wasting, air quality issues, safety issues, improper ventilations, leaks. Um, and so it's pretty easy to identify the systems because we can feel them or uh, we can, you know, see them in our utility bill or our oil bill or, or what have you. And so then um, we have to kind of go discover why the heck are these things happening? And so, pretty much for the history of contracting, this is uh, Dick Tracy, our little detective here, you know, uh, and, and we sort of used a... It's Colombo. Darn it. <laughs> I, I, it was a detective. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I no tried. Idea. I have no idea who it is. I tried. <laughs> well, who he is is he's a detective. And he's, and, and, he's, and, he's, and he's very intuitive, you know, he's like, I don't like the look of that guy sort of a thing, you know, and he's got his little cigar, and it's great. And really, in, in our world, in the contracting world, that's how it's been done for, you know, for years and years and years. It's just like, why is this happening? Oh, well, you know, the house is leaky, or I have single-pane windows, or, um, you know, finding a scapegoat, uh, you know, my energy bills are high because my furnace is old and my son turns the thermostat to 74 when we're gone. That is a problem that uh, hits more often than not. Okay. When we bought our um, home, um, there's an extra boiler room mm -hmm. down on the main and even on the... It's not basically just like down yeah. because it's free level. Is it a good idea to leave it unfinished? Does it affect the, the coldness of up there if I leave it like not finished? It, you know, it, it, really, um, it really depends on, on, on how the home's working. So if it's unfinished, you would want to have some sort of insulation barrier between unfinished space and finished space. And I think, uh, it, give me two slides and I can kind of explain it a little bit better. But uh, kind of going into the new way of how uh, we really like to um, get, you know, get in the homes and understanding is quantitative reasoning. So doing measurement, testing, and analysis, and using the science of home performance uh, to understand what's going. So here's a nice jumbled sentence. My house is cold because attic insulation is R12, air loss is 0.8 air changes per hour. I need an additional 200 CFM airflow in the ductwork. My window U value is 1.04. My furnace is operating at 71% efficiency. Now that probably sounds very Greek and un, you know, not, not that comprehensive to you guys, but uh, you know, that when we look at it this way, we can solve the problem a little better. So like say if this house had you know, that U value on the windows, which is uh, inverse of R value, 
replacing the windows might be a you know ten fifteen thousand dollar project when you could re-insulate in the attic for three thousand dollars and get that comfort and energy savings that you're looking for um, and all, all that good stuff so having the facts really empowers folks to you know make smart home improvement decisions we still of course offer you know the the free in-home consultation if someone says, hey, I'm, I want a furnace, and then you know, we go out and talk about it. But we always encourage folks uh, to start with you know, one of these home energy audits to discover the why. so when you choose whatever home improvement you do, you, you're doing it with the confidence that it's solving the problem that you want to solve. It for. So home performance is using quantitative data to understand homes uh, and, and seeing a home as a system uh, rather than a series of unrelated components. And we learn how a home works as a system by doing what's called a home energy audit. So here's a picture I was kind of uh, talking to you about. This is one that home energy auditors are certified by the Building Performance Institute. This is one of the more popular images. And what we can see here is we have a nice little house. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things going on. You got a furnace in the basement, you got a little utility room. Uh, under that stuff, you have some living space, and you have an attic. What you can see here um, is this is like in a winter mode where your home is heating, uh, the house got a nice little fire going and all that good stuff. That hot air is less dense than cold air, so that hot air is going to rise. If you have things like recess can lights or plumbing penetrations or you haven't sealed in between the walls or the attic hatch is leaky or the chimney, etc., that hot air just is going to keep going up right into the attic and the unconditioned space. And so what we want to do is identify where's the condition space, where's the unconditioned space, and then we want those to be disconnected as possible. Because what happens is as that hot air rises, the home goes under a slight negative pressure, and it's going to bring air in to equalize that pressure from the easiest point possible, which will be colder, denser air through attics, uh, you know, up through these utility areas, and that's where you start feeling those drafts come in and that kind of stuff. And so, again, you know, Replacing the furnace with a higher efficiency furnace here uh, will be great. You will save money and well, you know efficiency, but those higher efficiency furnaces actually uh, put out less heat per register because they're more efficient, and your house might even become more uncomfortable uh, because you haven't addressed the underlying home performance issues with the home. Kind of make sense? All right, cool. So, what a home energy auditor does. Um, a home energy auditor listens to homeowners, uh, understands the needs and concerns, the what, and then they do a series of tests and evaluations on the home. Uh, they inspect the building envelope, heating, ventilation, insulation, and a number of occupants to understand how a particular home is working as a system, and provides accurate diagnosis of what the conditions and the why are. So afterwards, you get a report, and it uh, goes through every category, air loss in the home, insulation, uh, heating system, any safety issues, any gas leaks. About 25% of homes have gas leaks, fun fact for you. Uh, you know, little small ones. Um, and that report then uh, is modeled through some energy savings, and we were able to kind of see it. And we actually have a nice little video um, that I will pull up real quick, which will do a lot better job than me just sitting up here yammering at you. So, and uh, a little plug for this video as this loads. Uh, this is a five-point home uh, home remodel series. So we actually start with a home, seeing the pre-existing -con conditions. This is episode three. Episode four has the improvements in five, before and after. If you guys. Everyone check out the whole kit and caboodle. And you can see how much energy we save for that home in Without an audit, your remodel is based guy. on best guesses <laughs> instead of quantitative results. Next, let's take a look at a home energy audit. Hi, my name is Corey. I'm a BPI certified auditor here at Washington Energy Services, and today I'm going to be performing a home energy audit. We start each audit with a brief interview with the homeowner. This is to understand the unique needs and concerns of the home. For this particular homeowner, they were concerned about their bedrooms being too cold in the winter as well as too warm in the summer. They also complained about 
high electric utility costs, and finally, suffer from allergies and want to improve the indoor air quality of the home. So, just got done taking a walk around the outside of the house. Some of the things I'm looking for on that outside inspection, I'm looking at venting, I'm looking at siding, windows, spots where water might be intruding into the home anyway. All right, so now we're going to check out the unconditioned parts of this house, which will be the attic and the crawl space. Um, I'm going to use this camera here, put it on my head, and it's going to allow me to show Jenny what's going on in these spaces without her actually following me up there. So now that we're up in the attic, one of the first things we want to look at is the levels of insulation that are up here. As you can see, there's about four inches of insulation. That equates to an R value of about 12. Uh, standard in Washington now is R49, so about four times as much insulation up here would be adequate to keep this home properly insulated. Um, the next thing that we're looking at is we're looking for any kind of penetration that are up here from the inside. Here's a source of where heat can rise from the inside and escape out into this attic. Another uh, important thing to point out in this attic, you notice over here we have ventilation um, soffits. If we were to add more insulation up here, it would be important to install what we call baffles, which are essentially uh, channels that allow air to rise above the insulation. All right, so we're in the crawl space now. One thing to point out down here is if you'll notice, there is no insulation in this crawl space. So that means that the underside of this home is completely unprotected from the elements. This uh, electric furnace right here, um, electric furnaces are, are a very inefficient way to heat your home. Um, a couple of options that can be much more energy efficient um, be a, a gas furnace or possibly even a, a heat pump system. Uh, so those are a couple of things that I'm going to recommend to the so the next thing that we're going to take a look at is how that conditioned air is being distributed throughout the home, which is through the stuck work here. Uh, first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, this dirty insulation that you can see on the stuck work. That indicates some sort of air leakage is going on within the duct work. So if we take, pull back this insulation, we'll see what kind of gaps we're talking about. Um, if you can see here, there's actually a decent gap right there where that air can get inside the duct work. Another thing to point out is the thin insulation that's on the ductwork itself. The R value of this type of insulation at this thickness is about an R2. Um, code now is R8, so just a much thicker insulation on the outside will just help get that conditioned air to the registers properly. And next we have what's called a blower door test. So we're going to be measuring air leakage of the home. So we're going to be sucking air out with this fan here to get depressurized the home. We're also going to be using this manometer, which is just measuring pressure. We're going to take the pressure of this home, as well as the volume of this home, plug it into some software that we have. That will help us identify how leaky this house is in comparison to other homes of this size. One of the tools that we use while conducting the blower test is this infrared camera here. This infrared camera shows temperature difference, so it can show us where we're missing any insulation, as well as where cold air is infiltrating into the outside. One thing that we've identified here is this penetration from the ceiling fan. Have you ever wondered why ceiling fans fan tend to get dirtier faster than other parts of the house? Because this fan is pulling air from above it before it's pushing that air down onto into the living space. So it's actually pulling that dirty attic air and distributing it throughout the home. So one thing that I'm going to point out here is uh, just how leaky these single pan aluminum windows are. So as you can see with the smoke pencil, um, we're getting a lot of air leakage around these frames. All right, that wraps up the testing portion of this audit. I'm now going to take all the data that I've gathered so far. I'm going to put it into some software that we have that will help me generate the report that I'm going to present to Jenny. At Washington Energy, it's our goal to provide you honest, accurate, and reliable information so that you can make Formed and great remodel decisions. And we can mention that the energy audit is actually two to three hours long. Yeah. Not five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's definitely a very condensed. And then again, if you. Uh, oh, no. Council. I don't want to watch the improvements unless you guys want it later or something like that. But uh, from current slide. All right. So that's kind of the basic steps of the audit. It does take about two to three hours. Uh, you know, there, there's just a lot going on in the homes. You know, when you're in those attics and crawl space alone, that's like probably 30 to 45 minutes of digging around, trying to figure out, you know, what's happening. Uh, you know, if 
someone says, hey, you know, my back bedroom's really cold, we have to look at, you know, how that air is getting to the back bedroom, how well that's insulated in relation to the other parts of the house, and other things. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so now, uh, how we fix the home. So understanding, uh, if you remember, we start with the what, what are your needs and concerns, why are they happening, and now we're to the how. Um, is understanding where and why your home is underperforming helps you prioritize your improvements correctly. Um, so like with the home energy audit, we uh, are able to model the projected energy savings. So like your oil furnace would probably be a, a, a nice and high one uh, for you. And then you can kind of see the return on investment, you know, take a look at that, how long you're planning on living in the home, and then you can kind of make the decisions. And this is kind of in general, uh, the route that if you're looking at just energy efficiency you'd want to take is you start with your shell making your box as tight as possible then heating uh, hot water electrical windows doors and then uh, extra credit points for renewables um, so this gives you the power to have it all green and efficient home a safe and healthy home and a comfortable and livable home so um, with our our company our, our big thing is you know we want to provide tailored uh, comfort and energy savings solutions to folks. Every home is different. Every homeowner is different. Uh, there's a, a lot of different needs, wants, and desires of folks. And uh, the whole contracting world is kind of a scary world, right? Uh, a lot of unknowns in there. A lot of, uh, you know, are they doing it right? Is it priced right? And that kind of stuff. So we try to be, you know, as clear and understandable as possible. Um, Experienced in home energy audits, uh, lowering energy use. So on average, uh, with our energy audits, when we do an energy audit and someone chooses a improvement, we actually come back and retest the home uh, to prove that you know we were able to get the results that we were looking for. Um, so on average, we're, we save about 21% uh, for our audit customers. Uh, we have a dedicated BPI certified audit test. Oh, look at there's even a bullet point about the retest and uh, then access to all the qualifying utility rebates. So, with that, um, if you guys would like, we can open it up if, for questions if you like, and uh, anything else that, that we can do. We notice we have two people who don't actually own homes right now. Is there anything you can offer people who live in apartments? Like, would you come in and do an audit on their apartment, or would you offer that to their building if they but thought that they weren't? I live in a house, but I don't mm -hmm. own it. But my landlord, anytime I ask him for something, he's like, yeah, do it. Well, if you if your landlord wanted to get a home energy audit, we'd be happy to, to do it. And then he would, you know, again, know for himself what improvements would make the most sense for him. Uh, so certainly have that. We have a couple of, you know, smaller products, but really our, our niche is residential retrofit homes. Uh, so that that probably is best but it's good to know um, it, it's something you know for me uh, that's where I started uh, with the company is doing home energy audits and, and the like I'm, I'm, a, I'm obviously a little bit biased because I you know, was in it but I, I'm a true believer that this is absolutely the best way if you're gonna do some remodels or, or some uh, improvements on your home it's it's well worth the money to how much money uh, they're normally three ninety nine, but this month we're doing a little special for two ninety nine, mm -hmm. and the cool thing uh, is that this month of March or April uh, for March. It's our March is our, our best sale of the year. It's our because it's kind of preseason. The heating season's over, and the window season hasn't really kicked in yet. So it's twenty percent off in March. Uh, and tomorrow's April. But, tomorrow's April. But the two ninety nine is good for April for the home energy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that got extended into April. So and then, what's uh, free? Wasn't there some kind of in-home consultation that was free? Yeah, so with a home energy audit, what, what, what you uh, get is you have the audit, and then you get the audit report, and then what we do is we actually come back, and then we go over the audit report with you and the recommendations that the audit, uh, you know, generated. At, at that point, that's if you... That's the free part. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. the audit, and, you get the free And if you decided that you didn't want to go the route of getting an audit, let's say you identified that your furnace stopped working and you needed to replace it, for us to come out and do a heat loss calculation of your house and provide you with a quote for your furnace is always free. It's always free to get that kind of a, a quote for equipment. It's okay. the home energy audit because it's a three-hour... Um, yeah. testing so, process yeah. that's a paid service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do like a cosmetic remodel, do, would you want to wait until you're done to do a home energy audit? 
I mean, if you're already going to rip out your kitchen, would you want to mm -hmm. do that before or after? Um, you know, it, to, to me, like a cosmetic remodel isn't as much affecting the home as a system as long as, you know, the contractors who are doing the uh, kitchen remodel are sealing everything uh, properly, then doing a home energy audit after would, would be fine. Um, or, you know, if you do it before, then you can say, hey, you know, please make sure to have all the plumbing penetrations and electrical penetrations sealed and, you know, you'd be well within your way. But on the, on the cosmetic stuff in terms of like internal, you know, a new range or, or something like that, it's a little bit that the audit isn't um, really geared towards that. It's more as the home is the system, looking right. at the plumbing, the heating, insulation um, are kind of the main ones. Siding certainly comes into play as well, uh, you know, because there's insulated siding. And then one other thing I want to mention with the audit is that if you do, you know, end up going with any of the uh, proposed recommendation, the audit fee is refunded for you. So that's basically our cost uh, to get someone out to, to do it. So what if you're doing a major remodel, like adding a floor, at what point do you get involved? Um, well, like if you were adding a floor and you um, needed some new additional duct runs and stuff like that, uh, then you'd want to have your uh, contractor, you know, typically like if, if that's the case you're going to be working with a general contractor. A lot of times they'll have their own folks that they work with and that's kind of going into that subcontractor thing. Uh, we do do that on occasions and our guys are, you know, very versed in, uh, you know, being able to increase duct work and then calculating the correct airflow for the new heating system and stuff like that. So if the rest of the house obviously needs some mm -hmm. help and we're adding a floor, then uh, would you come and do an audit on the existing? Yeah, I, I think. First. I, 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 and then we could do the whole renovation of the, the existing and then the new and add the new. I, I would say Given so. your recommendation. Yes. Yeah. I, I would. I would do it before. Um, and the reason being is you would understand that structure, and then also that addition that you're adding on. You know, like say that one side of your house is cold, and you're adding onto that side. If you don't add additional return, uh, warm air returns, uh, and you know address that properly, then you could be creating yourself a, a larger comfort problem. With any new sh new addition and structure, you are going to be, you know, going up to the correct building codes in that area and then, you know, getting a little more advanced, making sure that those new areas that are tighter aren't causing, you know, condensation on roof areas of other areas. Um, so I, I think before is a good good choice. You had a question, Phil? Yeah, I saw that as he was in the crawl space, he was looking at the insulation around the, those were the heat ducts, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have insulation around my heat ducts, but I have a heater return into the basement. So, so, so if you if your heating ducts are in the conditioned space, they They're don't always. need to be heated. So, okay. do you have kind of a daylight basement? A daylight basement. It has windows. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not officially finished, but it mm -hmm. is. Does it have a floor or dirt? It has. It's a floor. Yeah. yeah it's cement floor. Cement floor. And, and are there? Warm air registers that blow like there's like one like right at the furnace. Or there's one that's a couple of feet from the furnace, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. definitely blowing warm yeah. air back in to so, it. So the home right now is being designed as, as that being conditioned space. So right. as long as you wanted to keep that conditioned space, it's great. Um, and then just how well that is performing, we we oftentimes find it not performing very well uh, down there, just because you know you got your concrete cold walls. Typically, you know, usually older windows, if people are going to replace windows, the last ones they replace are the ones that are right there at street level, uh, you know, which is, which is typical. So we've, you know, done quite a few, uh, you know, projects with folks where we'll just completely, uh, you know, they'll have that as a storage area where, you know, have some bikes and, you know, whatever else they have, uh, but then they won't have that the heated area. We insulate at the um, floor of the main area and then uh, that way you're unconditioned on the bottom you have all the heat not going to areas you're not living in but you're at going actually where you're you know living which is good speaking of condensation okay um if i find if i have condensation on my windows and i'm not cooking 
What's happening exactly? What has happened? Um, you have double pane windows? <laughs> oh, no, no, of course pane. not. Yeah. yeah. No, I, the house that we live in, I think it's around maybe 80 years old. Mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere in that window, there's probably some sort of a seal failure. And, and that's where, that's condensation inside the frames. But basically that is, you know, differences between outside and inside temperature and relative humidity. And, and that's why that's happening um, with, with those single pane windows. It's just kind of the physics of how warm and humid is it here? How warm and humid is it outside? If it's at a certain threshold, it's gonna start condensing. So new windows then, what I'm hearing. That new windows, uh, Yes, I, I would say that's that's part of it. That's one that everyone kind of points to first because they can see it, right? Right. And they always go, new windows, I need new windows. Uh, where actually windows um, on the energy efficiency side of things aren't going to give you typically as much of a return as like air sealing or insulating and stuff like that. And the reason that we are so aware of that is because with heating and, and, and heat, there's three ways that heat is transferred. You have uh, convection, which is like your gas furnace or oil furnace, Con uh, conduction, which is, you know, my hand heat going into this whiteboard, and then you have radiation, which is like if you stand in front of a fire, you feel warm, but if you stand behind someone in front of a fire, you don't feel that heat. So windows radiate the temperature. So in the summertime, you're feeling that heat like blasting you, and then in the wintertime, you're standing next to that window, and it's like super cold. And so that, to us, humans, like we feel that a lot more and we're like, geez, these things must be just killing me on my energy bill because it's us feeling it. But in reality, the air leaks and the furnaces and you know usually some other factors, if, if that's what you're most interested in, are, are what's going to be the, the biggest bang for your buck. Um, that being said, most a lot of people want to have enjoyable, beautiful windows. And uh, so, you know, if that's the case, it, it does make a really, really great comfort increase too. So as long as you are aware, cognizant of the fact that, you know, this isn't going to cut my energy bill by 50%, but it is going to uh, make me a lot more comfortable, it is going to make my home more valuable, and, uh, you know, they're going to last a long time and all that good stuff, then, then that's the right decision. And those are the kind of situations that we try to work with with homeowners, is having those kind of conversations where, you know, okay, you want to do windows, and then he's like, yeah, I want to save a bunch of energy. Okay, so do you want to save energy, or do you, do you want new windows for the comfort? It's like, well, I really want to save energy. Okay, well, if saving energy is the most important thing for you, then there's some other stuff that does look like it'll model a lot better for energy savings. Um, and, and that way, people aren't doing, you know, a, a ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 improvement, and the one thing that they wanted, which was a reduction in their energy bill, isn't happening, and that's not a win for anyone, right? Because then they're not really satisfied uh, with the project, and, and we, you know, we really want people to be to be happy with it. We want to provide a, a great service and uh, you know make make people love their home because all homes have the ability to be loved. It's just uh, you know they're they're oftentimes a lot of work, and uh, there there are things you, that we need help with with our homes. Just like you know, for me and my car, I certainly. You know, I'm not the most mechanically savvy, believe it or not. Again, nerdery. That's uh, sort of sort of what I like. But uh, you know, making making it work and making making homes work is, is kind of what what gets our our juices flowing. Where are you located, or where do you provide services? We um, have two locations. We have one in Tacoma and one in Linwood, uh, and we go all the way to Mount Vernon, all the way south to Olympia. So pretty. Uh, and size organization. How often should we do duct cleaning? Duct cleaning is recommended by the uh, EPA every three to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you have allergies and like indoor air quality problems, they you know recommend them more. You know if you have like a, a kid with asthma in the home or something like that, it's really um, they haven't done terrific studies on it, so there isn't great quantitative analysis. But you know doing audits and seeing some of the stuff that I've seen in ducts, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that, you know, if your ducts are dirty, cleaning them is, is really helpful. Um, making sure you change your filters is one that people all the time forget, and we hate nothing more than going out on a service call, you know, at 11 at night on, you know, a cold snap, having to charge an over capacity fee for 199 to pull out a filter and be like, 
first clog your filter 199 and we're off and the technician is unhappy, the customer is unhappy and all that stuff. Um, so filter cleaning is really important. Um, and there's also, uh, you know, some good air purification products out there uh, that if, you know, indoor air quality is really important to you, the filter, you know, is, is a filter and so it takes out particulates and stuff like that. But they have made good improvements. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if your guys' building has, you know, some of these systems where you're actually able to uh, channel in uh, ionized peroxide molecules uh, into the home and it eliminates like cooking odors. Uh, kills mold, viruses, bacteria, and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's one of my favorite products that we sell because a lot of the stuff that we, you know, people don't, you know, when they have friends over, cork a bottle of vino, like, come out and take a look at my furnace. You know, I've just got this. You know, it's not, it's not really the, uh, the most, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word, sexy of products, but. Uh, Do you test for the random glass, the package? Does it include testing whether there's any Radon, radon, radon. Something like radon. That. Yes, we, that's don't, not good for your health. We right? don't do um, specific radon testing, uh, but what, what we can do, radon gas is a, a condition where a crawl space doesn't have a vapor barrier and it has a bunch of air leaks and in some areas it can produce this radon gas so which isn't great for your home. A little quick aside to that, indoor air quality um, in, in homes uh, quite often times, and I forget the exact numbers on the study that was done by either Energy Star or EPA, but the indoor air quality in, in a lot of homes can be quite worse than outdoor metropolitan air um, due to things like radon gas. So to, to us, we look at that testing equipment's fairly expensive and we want to get in and, and try to fix the homes. and. If your crawl space is sealed properly and you have a vapor barrier, then it's not a problem. So it's kind of, we go in and say, listen, there's, you know, it's just dirt down here and there's a bunch of air leaks, you know, uh, from plumbing penetrations, electrical penetrations, and uh, next to duct things. And that's how that air, you know, when we saw that picture of that house being pulled up, you have that negative pressure and you feel that air. If you ever want to, with your home, if you have a crawl space, uh, turn the heater off, let it just sit for a few minutes, and then go to one of your crawl space vents and just put your hand over it. And if it's not sealed, you're going to feel air coming out. And, and that is happening. Try it. Yeah. Yes. And you feel air coming. Mm -hmm. and, and, and feel the smell of the yeah. crawl space. Yeah. Stuff, you know? and, and so if you seal that stuff, um, that, you know, is, is very helpful. In, in fact, I mean, if we have two minutes, I could load the. Uh, improvement video, and we can Go watch ahead. them watch them do in action. Do we have two minutes? Do we have two minutes? Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> All right. So Actually, like four minutes. <laughs> Radon isn't as big a deal here as it is in the East Coast. Yeah. In Massachusetts, on every house sale, they do a radon test at the, at the, at the time of the sale. Yeah, that, that is correct. It isn't. Now that we have all the data points on the home, we can start prioritizing our improvements. We look at energy usage from the bills home. our homeowner provided and see what the savings recommendations might be. We prioritize based on health and safety issues, including indoor air quality, and return on investment, which is calculated by the cost of the improvement versus the model of energy savings for your specific home. Our recommendations for Jenny include air sealing and insulating both the attic and crawl spaces, Usually replacing the, the old savings. electric furnace with a high efficiency heat pump and air handler, replacing the old electric water heater with a gas tankless water heater, and finally, replacing the old aluminum single pane windows with Energy Star rated double pane vinyl windows. Let's get started. Insulation and air sealing in the attic 
So the air sending all of the electrical penetration, plumbing. So think of every wall that you have. All of that needs to be seen. Putting in baffles and taking care of the attic. In the crawl space, we are insulating the subfloors to R24, also doing air sealing of and being electrical penetration to plumbing penetrations. And with the ducts, we're sealing all the joints and seams with mastic and insulating that to an R8. Before we install the new furnace, we're going to make sure to clean out the ducts with a professional duct vac. After that, we will install a gear handler and a high efficiency heat pump so the customer is going to be able to have heating in the winter as well as cooling in the summer. In terms of the plumbing of the home, we started by cleaning all the drains in the house. We replaced the electric water heater with a high efficiency gas tankless water heater that's expected to last 20 years. Another large aspect of this home energy retrofit is replacing all of the old single pane windows that were causing comfort as well as energy efficiency problems with high efficiency energy star rated vinyl windows. The windows that we chose have insulated frames, double low heat coating, and they are made in the northwest. The homeowner chose to replace the old aluminum sliders with matching energy star rated French doors. As you can see, we did a key upgrade with a whole home energy retrofit that will maximize your comfort, value, and energy savings. We were happy that we were able to help Jenny with all of these home energy retrofits. And Jenny was happy that she was able to get these home energy retrofits from one company with one phone number and no hassle. So how much did it cost? Um. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, she looked that, like she was doing a lot of other stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> that was that, that was that was, was a, a pretty whole, comprehensive whole thing. So I don't remember the uh, exact number, but if you're thinking of the windows, you're probably looking around 12 to 15 there. Should we get a hybrid heating system? So probably like 10ish there. Uh, the tankless. Look at four. Um, the insulation and ceiling. Insulation, probably. And, uh, so that's probably like a forty, close to forty thousand dollar project. Plus the roof. Um, plus the roof. Yes. That's what you so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the our savings over time? So that was, was 40, like 40, 46. 46 percent was what was modeled. Did it? Yeah. So. 19% on the air sealing and insulation, 14% uh, for the heating system, 7% uh, for the tankless, and 6% for the windows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wasn't joking when those windows are one of the, <laughs> the lower items. So we could go to Home Depot and do our own ceiling job if we Absolutely. Them. Because <laughs> it's it, it, didn't, it didn't look <laughs> that hard. I would hate to go into our little crawl space kind of <laughs> course, but you know. I, I always, you know, tell folks if if that's you know the route you want to go, by all means, give her a try. I would say, you know, go into your crawl space and go from one end to the other, and then come back and see I, how that goes. I, I but uh, but no, in, in theory, in theory, you can purchase a um, insulation. You know those wands that they have. You can purchase the foam. Uh, you could purchase the insulation. You could, you know, do it yourself. You can purchase a tankless water. You can purchase a furnace. You can purchase all the windows from from Home Depot. Uh, what I, you know, caution against is to really make sure you know what you're doing. Um, a great example that of a, a problem that um, it didn't happen in our company, but it happened in a uh, different company when we were going through training on this. Is that uh, so? Like they had a crawl space. And the homeowner chose to um, not seal the crawl space, but then seal the attic. Um, and so then, after a couple of years, their roof started leaking. It was a relatively new roof. They go up into the attic, and all of a sudden, you know, there's all this mold that's on the top of the roof cavity. And what was happening is that crawl space that wasn't sealed at the time was going through the moisture from the crawl space was going through the walls into the attic. The attic was now sealed and there wasn't enough venting in the attic. And because there wasn't enough venting in the attic, that water was condensing like your windows. Mm -hmm. And then after, you know, over time it started growing mold and then all of a sudden, you know, you have a roof leak uh, because you, you know, didn't look at the home as a system as properly as one needs to. 
Um, so the number, the very first rule of a BPI certified auditor is kind of like doctors, it's do no harm. It's because there's a lot of ways where you can not do it correctly. Um, and, and so doing it correctly is really important. There's plenty of folks that go out there and do it. The, I think the true testament of how often it happens is, you know, we give our, our technicians the opportunity to borrow some of our stuff and, and do, you know, because they're techs, and then we kind of we'll do a, a free audit for them and, and stuff like that and give them the recommendations and the outline so that they can, you know, do it in a little more affordable manner. Very, very few of them actually do it and then actually get it, you know, completed because it, it's, it, it is, a, a, this, that crawl space was a very good crawl space, but in terms of all the divisions that we have, this is the most labor intensive because you have old insulation and in every single section they go in and then they pull back all that insulation, they find all the air gaps, seal all those gaps, reapply that insulation, then they have to go to those, the baffles, when, and then if you think about it, your roof going down like this, and so they're down there, if, if you remember seeing them kind of down here with the roof there going tuk, tuk, tuk. And then, you know, the nails from the roof are going down, and so there's, you know, typically like one to two inch barbs on the top of the roof, which hurt. Yeah. Um, it's a tough job. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it, it, it's <laughs> the, the, guys, the guys that do that work are, are It looks amazing. easy, but it's not. See, yeah. the, I, nice I part, <clears throat> the nice part of their program, though, is the follow-up with the visit, because when I did my energy audit with my brand new house, we didn't partner with them yet. They partnered with them like a month or two later. Well, I did my energy audit, and he basically just emailed it to me and said, okay, this is what you need to fix. Told me nothing to do. So I went and did all this and sealed the bottom, did the attic, did all, all the things he did as a recommendation, but it wasn't, nobody did any follow-up to say what you need to do. So I kind of took it on my own to do it. It isn't easy, so. Um, but I did do the Home Depot house, so. What kind of guarantee do you um, provide then on any um, equipment that you install, the heaters, the furnaces, all that? Different equipment, equipment come with different guarantees. Every Everything that we install comes with our 100% satisfaction guarantee, where um, within the year, if you were unsatisfied for any reason, we would literally come in, remove what we've done, and, and repay in full. Um, so you have, you have that. Um, and then, like with the windows, uh, the windows have like lifetime warranty, um, and our premium line of windows in vinyl has a lifetime glass uh, breakage warranty as well. Um, all of our windows have some form of limited lifetime warranty. Most of them are transferable. Do you have what, wood windows as an option? Um, and, and before I buy anything that costs more than like hundred dollars, I always do consumer reports. So if I was to, I'm going to definitely call for an audit. I know my house needs it. But if you, if then the consultation includes recommending a particular type of tankless water heater mm -hmm. and a particular type of furnace, am I going to find it highly rated on, on something like Consumer Reports? Absolutely. You're not going to sell me a piece of junk. Do you re represent <laughs> a full <laughs> range <laughs> of, of uh, companies? Or do you have specific? We have we, we do it different brands that we work with. Like so, for our heating systems, we use Bryant, uh, which is a um, in the Carrier Corporation. And it's top a, rated on consumer. It's reports. top rated on consumer reports. It's a, it's a very very good. They have the this new heat pump called the Carrier. Right. 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 1998, so it's definitely getting ready for retirement, and you should start planning for the retirement of that furnace. Um, how often are you getting it tuned up? I haven't tuned up since I bought it. Okay. Not, not